Hello everyone, my name is Jose Gallardo Salazar, I'm from Claudius Consulting and my blog is mobilepractices.com. During this screencast, I'll be talking about the Microsoft Patterns and Practices mobile application blogs. It was also part of the development team for this project, which is currently available for downloading at mobile.coldplex.com. This is a very good suite of uh, building blocks for a mobile application because they are targeting most of the main challenges that you can have during a mobile application development. In fact, even if a mobile application is basically a smart client application, it has some particularities related to the fact that it's running on a mobile device. A mobile device is a resources constrained device. You don't have a huge screen, a full sized keyboard or a mouse to interact with it. You have a limited storage capacity a small available memory and a slow processor compared with other scenarios. But there is more. Your device uh, has intermittent connectivity, so you cannot assume that it will be always connected and your application should take care about it. Your device has uh, a limited battery life uh, and your application may run on different environments like in outdoors where you will need a high contrast UI or in indoors where you don't. And we can still enumerate more challenges to address and all those challenges can be translated in some specific areas like connectivity, user experience, data and services, security and management. The mobile application blocks are covering most of those areas. We are covering management, security, connectivity, data and services, data persistence and synchronization. And we are also covering user experience, in this case uh, relying on the community edition of third-party products like the Clarius Orientation Aware Control and the RESCO Mobile Forms Toolkit. So, this is the scenario. Those are the areas we are covering. Let's see what we are including as part of the mobile application blocks. First of all, it's uh, good to know that the mobile application blocks are basically an evolution of the mobile client software factory from 2006. We took the main blocks from the software factory, made some fixes and improvements, uh, mainly coming from the Microsoft Dynamics mobile group experience, driven by a great advisory board from uh, Microsoft MVPs and mobile experts. We focused our effort in facilitating the community adoption of the blocks. That's the reason because our installer doesn't have any dependency on server-side components, and the outcome is just a plain source code uh, of the blocks. So you can just pick the code for the block you are interested in and include it as part of your project. But we are not including just uh, the block source code. We are also including some how-tos and quick starts, which are small applications with a few lines of code that you can use as a quick reference to see how to use a particular block or a reduced set of blocks without the need to be familiar with the whole mobile application blocks project. And we're also including uh, a reference implementation application, which is a line of business uh, mobile application that uses all the main blocks. It's a pre-sales application provided with the full source code. You'll have access to the whole source code for this application, which, uh, as I said before, is using all the main blocks. So you can use it as a reference about how to use the blocks, but also as a guidance uh, to see how can you implement modularity in a mobile application by using the container model block, or how can you implement some design patterns like the common pattern or the MVV pattern in a mobile application. It also illustrates how can you improve your application UI by using the RESCO Mobile Forms Toolkit. You can see that we are using here the advanced list and the tab control from RESCO to provide a functional, but at the same time, nice look and feel, and the Clarius Orientation Aware Control to provide the screen rotation support for our application. This application is also giving uh, some guidance about how can you get a better integration with a Windows Phone device by interacting with the device contact list, uh, making a phone call, sending an SMS message, or getting the current location from a GPS-equipped device. And again, you have access to the full source code of this application. Where you can get uh, all this material? Well, uh, following this uh, community-driven approach, we have enabled two sites for the blogs. The first one is the official mobile application blog site, located at mobile.coldplex.com. On this place, uh, you can find the main blog source code and a few quick starts and how-tos. The second site is uh, the mobile contribution project, where you can find additional community content. It is located at mobilecontrib.coldplex.com. Here you'll find uh, the how-tos and quick starts, the reference implementation application, and even some additional blogs. So the mobile application blogs are not only the main blogs, 
you can find some additional content on the mobile contribution site, like the Prism event uh, aggregator or the mobile updater application block. You also have some third-party community edition products like the Clarius Orientation Aware Control and the RESCO Mobile Forms Toolkit. So let's take a, a quick look at the main blocks and let's start by the configuration block. The configuration block fills the lack of uh, configuration file support for the .NET Compact Framework. It adds uh, configuration file support for your Compact Framework application and it's compatible with the full framework system configuration namespace. So you can reuse your full framework knowledge, uh, but remember that the configuration block is read-only and it doesn't support uh, application settings. The good news is that you can always extend the block, so you can add it if you need it. The connection monitor allows your application to be aware of the connectivity state of the device. You can use it to check if the device is connected, what are the current connections, and what network are they connected to. It also lets your application know when the device connectivity state has changed, so you can adapt your behavior accordingly. You can even make decisions uh, based on what network are you connected to, or in how expensive is your, conne your current connection. This information can be configured by default in your configuration file. The password authentication block provides a very good approach to authenticate your users without the need uh, to store the password on the device, which is uh, quite risky. So you don't need to take care about how to secure that password because it's not a problem anymore. It also provides uh, encryption services that you can use from your application. In fact, those services are used by the configuration block to support encrypted sections to secure some critical information, which may include credentials, for example. The container model block is uh, the new main block that we're including with the project. It's our dependence injection container, and it has been developed from scratch, thinking on mobile. So it's a very fast and lightweight container, which can help you to architect your application, keeping it decoupled without any noticeable performance impact. So it helps you to have a better code, and at the same time, you can gain testability and the basic modularity support. There are very good quick starts around this block. I highly recommend you to take a look at them. I'm sure you will love this block. Okay, the data access block is a, a typical data abstraction layer. It was based on the enterprise library data access block, and you can use it as a basic database abstraction for your application. We're providing a SQL Compact Edition implementation as part of the block, and it's actually used by some of the blocks like the disconnected agent uh, for data persistence. For data synchronization, we're including the data subscription block, which is a great helper on the Metro application client setup, and at the same time, it keeps the subscription configuration stored in a database, so it makes it easier to rebuild it if needed, and it also adds some additional information about the synchronization process, like the last successfully synchronization date. For calling uh, web services on an occasionally connected network environment, we're including the disconnected service agent block. This block encapsulates uh, your services uh, calls in request objects on a persistent queue, and it makes the calls according to the connectivity state of the device and a configurable behavior where you can optionally define parameters like the number of retries, expiration, etc. It also uses uh, logical endpoint names which are translated into actual addresses and account names by using the endpoint catalog. By default, the endpoints and credentials to be used for the account names can be defined on the configuration file, but you can customize that according to your needs. In fact, that's the spirit of uh, all the blocks. We're providing a solid and totally usable set of blocks, but they have been designed and coded in a way that you can easily adapt and customize them according to your needs. So feel free to play with them, adapt them, and extend them. And feel free also to collaborate with us, sending your feedback, and participating on the discussions forum at Coldplex. If you want more information about the blogs, please visit our site at themobile.coldplex.com. Or for additional community content, you can also visit mobilecontrib.coldplex.com. For information about the Clarius Orientation Aware Control or the RESCO Mobile Forms Toolkit, you can visit the, their sites at orientationaware.net and resco.net. And you can also visit my blog at mobilepractice.com. Thank you for watching this screencast.